to me, it became clear I didn't recognize myself in the mirror My focus was changed and I was the one in the closet I opened my eyes to a dream that'll never die What was meant to be? G-E No hate, just positivity G-E The best version of me? G-E My destiny <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Mike Perez. I am the co-founder of a brand called Good in Evil, uh, along with my buddy, a buddy of mine named Matt Chadwick. So yeah, I just want to do this quick video here today um, explaining what Good in Evil is, the beginnings of Good in Evil. Um, I'm using this great, great program called StreamYard. Uh, some people have heard the story of Good in Evil and a lot of people haven't. So really want to take some time to really explain what we're trying to do with the brand and how it all got started. Um, you just watched a little promo video of kind of the beginnings of Good and Evil, and it really all started back in summer of 2020. And just like myself and a lot of other people, we were going through some really tough times in the country, and there's just so much chaos going on. And, you know, a lot of the whole the country was divided against each other. Um, you know, I alluded to having arguments with friends and family online, you know, through politics and other social injustices in the world. And it just brought me in a really bad place. And, you know, like I said, I looked in the mirror and I didn't like what I was seeing. So I really wanted to focus on something that would take me to a better place than what I was seeing every day on the news or hearing every day on the news. So I decided to um, really focus on a happy place, which um, I part of my happy places out there are horror movies. Uh, I love, love the uh, holiday of Halloween. I have so many great memories growing up with friends and family um, on Halloween day uh, because of all the crazy injustices in the world and how people were being treated. I always felt like a day like Halloween was the one true day that everybody got to be the best version of themselves or got to represent the true person that they really they are and wanted to be. And a lot of people didn't weren't accepted for who they are and what they wanted to be. And Halloween was a great day for them to kind of like get by and fake it, I guess. And other people wouldn't judge them as much because, um, you know, they just thought, oh, it's just Halloween. They're just dressing like that. But a lot of people just felt best you know, the best version of themselves and most comfortable in their own skin on that day. And so I really thought about, you know, I really wanted to start something or begin the process of something that would bring the whole world together and not have each other at each other's throats. So I thought about Halloween. I thought about creating a place where we can celebrate the, hol the, the holiday every single day of the year. And when I'm talking about you know, a destination phase of Halloween 365, it goes a lot like this. And I'm going to pull it on the screen right now. Um, exactly what Matt and I are, are trying to do with this brand, Good and Evil. And I'll get it up here in a second. And let me turn this off here and bring this up. So Good and Evil. Good and Evil is a brand, a web store, an epic future destination and now actually two comics and a music EP titled Chilling, Thrilling Sounds of Good and Evil. But we'll talk more about that in another video. But the destination phase can be described as Halloween 365 days a year, including a theme park, movie theater, convention center, performing arts center, pop culture store, and special effects school. So good and evil is meant for everyone to live, relive the best experiences the spooky holiday has to offer. This concept has been in my head for years, and my buddy Matt has helped broaden the vision on a grander scale. So again, currently, grant, uh, good and evil is a brand, a web store, two comics, an EP, and a dream. So all ideas need to start somewhere, and this is our attempt to take action and put it out to the universe for our dream to become our reality. Along the way in our journey to good and evil, we will always strive to promote some very talented people to showcase and offer their creations to the world. This comic showcases industry professionals and students who have dreams of their own in various art fields. Please check out 
their websites and social media accounts to see more of their amazing gifts. So if you made it this far and are still reading, we thank you for the bottom of our hearts for supporting our early efforts. We are taking one step at a time and we consistently will consistently update everyone on our progress. Please subscribe to our mailing list on www.goodandevil.com to keep tabs on our progress. And please consider purchasing merchandise on the site as well. Your purchases will help us manifest our dreams into reality. Thank you, and we look forward to one day greeting you personally at the entrance of Good and Evil. Thankful, grateful, and blessed, Michael Perez and Matthew Chadwick. So that was our, that is our main goal in what we want to do with this brand, Good and Evil. It has manifested into other things like comic books and music. However, we're trying to build it from the whole idea from the ground up to get to this destination phase. And I kind of want to go over the whole, it's important to us that people understand that it's no, it's not, it's just not about a comic book and, you know, being rich and famous, or anything like that. We really truly want to provide a destination for the world to, um, again, be able to leave all the, the negativity in the past and behind you and really have hopefully provide a, at least a day or an experience that helps you just get away from the the real world that we can talk about and uh really just have a great time with friends and family and not worry about politics religion all that other stuff that um might cause conflict in your lives so i want to talk about the progression of this brand and it's been an idea in my head and matt's for years now and you know we have a saying at good and evil called don't let doubt haunt you. And we let doubt haunt us for the past years and thought that uh, nothing like this could ever happen. You know, us middle-aged guys, you know, it's, it's a pipe dream, you know, it's never going to happen. And we decided, you know what, this can happen. And whether it's one step at a time, one brick at a time, we are, we are determined to work on this for the rest of our lives. And one day, yes, we will have this destination phase. So the idea had to start somewhere and the progress had to start somewhere. So the first thing we started out with, again, I'm going to show you some of these slides here and turn this off here. So the first thing that was in my head was, okay, let's have a destination phase right here. And then this picture kind of represents in a funny way, we got families, you know, friends and um, the walking dead, though, I guess you can call it, or zombies or the undead, where we wanted to have a place where everybody's welcome, whether you're alive or dead. So in a joking way, you know, I had this image in my head that this is a destination. Everyone's welcome. We're all going to get along. No one's eating brains. No one's, you know, out to get anybody. So this was the first vision I had in my head of this destination called Good and Evil. Um it came up with a with a logo a few years back and you know a really crude logo there and and again you know we want to manifest our dream so we want to start off with some type of logo and this is our first attempt at this logo and uh thank god my wife has uh, a lot of skills when it comes to graphic design and she's made logos in the past so the first step in this whole good and evil brand was we need a new logo so my wife is is um the founder and creator of a um, graphic design company called Apple Box Creative. And my wife, Lisa, was able to come up with this idea for us. And I absolutely loved it. So um, that day in the late July that we started all this, this was the first step was, okay, we need to come up with a, a pretty cool logo. And I, I think it turned out very well. And from there now, you know what? I got a logo. And then we got our our donate domain name goodandevil.com that wasn't taken thank god um so we have a logo we have a domain name and now again my my um, wife lisa she's worked on websites she's developed websites so she started developing the good and evil website so and we had access to taking our our ideas and our brands and putting it on merchandise so the first thing we did is once we got the logo is we made a t-shirt so we have a t-shirt with the logo on there and our the the journey that is beginning with to our destination to good and evil so we're really proud of the fact that okay now we got a logo we got a website 
Wait, like domain name. We can start doing some merchandise. So what else we can do? What's the next step in building this brand? So in our minds, we had, we had this idea of a destination. So we wanted to create characters or mascots for our destination. So it all starts with, you know, what's, what's some ideas that we can come up with? So one night I was thinking, okay, so good and evil. So sometimes people think of, you know, the color red is the evil color and color blue is good. So I first started off thinking, okay, so we got, you know, we got red and blue, good and evil. Uh, what about yin and yang symbols? You know, so I looked up online and saw and typed in red and blue, yin and yang symbols. And the first image that I saw was this image right here. And then immediately after looking at this image, I thought, wow, that kind of looks like a mask a little bit. So um, so the next step in figuring out what characters we're going to make. So took a blank white mask, took the idea of the yin and yang symbols and started creating some ideas. So a lot of different ideas came about in this making this mask. But this is the idea that's really, um, really resonated with both of us. And we stuck with us. So started um designing the mask really crudely on an iPhone. You know, we didn't have any uh, big digital imaging um, programs to work on this. So we, I used my iPhone to go ahead and start messing around with ideas. So went ahead, started doing a yin and yang symbol on a blank mask. And at first we had the, the mouth on there and it just looked kind of creepy, looked kind of weird. So I just decided to take the, <laughs> the lips off and have the, the mask idea. So it turned out this way. This is the uh, one character and you know we needed to have both characters. We had the, the yin and yang type um, symbols there. So this character we decided to call G and this character is E. So again, just opposite color schemes on a yin and yang symbol on a blank mask. And then because we were thinking about mascots, we're thinking about you know these characters, you know, at the entrance of our good and evil destination where they're going to, they're going to be there to, um, to greet people and to be kind of like the ringmasters, like of a circus ringmasters at a circus, kind of controlling the vibe of the whole interaction. And then, so decided to come up with, okay, let's put some top hats on this, on these characters. Let's see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on G. And then we did the opposite color schemes for E. And then eventually we came up with this. So we got G and E, they got, they look like old circus ringmasters with a Victorian look on them. They got their, they got their canes and the top hats. And we really, really dug this concept right here. So now we're like, great, you know, we've got, we got some mascots now. We got a, a pretty cool look that we think is a good look. And it has some contrasting, you know, colors of balance of good and evil and good and evil and other things. So, um, so we decided, okay, what's their story? So we thought of a main character that is the reason why these two characters were created. And we wanted to come up with the big boss person. And so we had to think of, okay, what are we going to do? We got to think of another character to create. So we kind of went the same route. And I wanted to stay away from religious symbols and things like that. So I looked up, what are some of the most powerful symbols in the on the planet right now? And... It came up with um, you know a couple different ideas on there, as you can see on the screen, and the symbol of Ohm really resonated with me. Not not necessarily the what the symbol looked like at first, but the meaning behind it was harmony with the universe, and that's exactly the types of things we wanted to represent our brand. Was okay, harmony with the universe. How do we bring harmony within the universe and bring people together? And then after looking up Ohm we found the symbol of Ohm and it came up looking like this. And the first thing that came to mind, my mind looking at the symbol is, wow, that looks like, that looks like the number three right there. And the definition or what is the power of Ohm is Ohm is a great tool for manifesting positive things in your life. And that's exactly what I was, was striving to do with the brand is one to manifest positive things, not negative things. Um, so this symbol really resonated with me and I thought it was a great representation of our of our brand. So another thing with Ohm, chanting Ohm calms your mind and helps you bring in positive energy into your body. You can control your anger by chanting Ohm on a regular basis. Stress lies in your lies in your mind. And as I take this off here, um, 
it just helps you relieve that stress. And then there's a lot of anger that I had built up in me. And I just really felt like this was meant to be, and this is what they really, really needed to represent our brand. So we have the symbol Ohm. And again, here's another a closer look at what the symbol looks like. So like we did with G&E, we got out the blank mass template, put on the symbol on there. And like I said, the, the number three really stuck with me because, um, you know, I thought about Halloween right away. And that's one of the main things is we want to celebrate Halloween every day. So I wanted to add a one in there somehow. So 31, October 31st. So I just simply added the purple stripe on there. And the whole reason or the color scheme for the this character that we call the elder was red and blue make purple. So we wanted to come up with that color scheme for the our main character, the elder. And this is what he turned out to look like. And we considered the elder being this being. And if you read our comics, you'll learn a lot. You'll learn, you know, what you need to know about this elder, what, how he came about. And pretty much this character right here is the the boss of all things in the world there as far as, um, you know, he's got tons of power. Um, and this character is striving to find the perfect balance in inside himself of, you know, because we all have some good and evil inside us. And the beginning of this character was mostly evil and not to spoil the story, but um, the journey of the elder is finding that perfect balance. Like we all are trying to find our perfect balance in our life. Um, so we're not always raging and we're not, you know, tipping the scale to being more negative. So um, this character really is um, embodiment of what I was going through and what I was striving to find in my life was that balance in life where um, I wasn't angry all the time. So this kiss is what the character looks like. And again, we're really super proud of how these three characters turned out. So again, this is the elder. And then we've got Gene E right there. So now we got, you know what, our brand is, is progressing. We got three mascots. Um, we got a um, website, we got some merchandise. So how do we get this story across to the masses and start getting people excited about our idea? So um, being a big comic book fan for pretty much my whole life, um, I enlisted some, some great advice from some people in the comic book world. And they said, you know what, why don't you make a comic book about this? You know, and you know, one, you have the rights for your characters, and two, you can tell, you know, you can begin the story of these characters and what you're trying to do with the brand. So one of the first things I did was, okay, Matt and I were not the best drawers in the world. Um, there are a lot of a lot of more talented people out in the world that can can really take our, our vision from um, our ideas and make it into reality through a really solid presentation in art. So the first person I thought about enlisting and in, enlisting in, in, in our our um, our comic book idea was a gentleman by the name of Dylan Andrews. So I'm going to go ahead and put up some examples of Dylan's work right here, and I'm going to change this banner right here to Mr. Dylan Andrews, and we're going to change what brought me to um, really really seek out Dylan. So Dylan Andrews, um, you can find out his, find his work on www.makecomicscool.com. Now Dylan Andrews is a comic book, independent comic book creator that has many different creative characters that he's created in his, whether you want to call it the Dylan universe or the archive universe. Um, he's come out with pr um, quite a few different comic book properties on Kickstarter. Um, and he's been very successful with building a universe of his own characters. So I was really inspired by Dylan's drive to create his own characters outside of the big corporate mainstream characters. And I really, really love the look of this particular one. This is the first character that I was introduced of Dylan's work. And his name is Archive, the Warhood. And um, I really, really was drawn to the look of this character. And you know, growing up, I was a big Marvel fan. I loved Moon Knight, you know, and obviously love Batman, things like that in DC. But I really, really love the look of this character. So this is how I first saw Dylan's work. And I just sought out his books. And I really enjoyed the books that he came out with. So one example is this one right here. This is Warhood. Another character that he's created is called Sist. And being, a again, a big horror fan, I really liked his style of how he drew his characters that he created. And just the cool backstories of his characters. Uh, another character he's 
or team he's done is called the oppressors um and then verses and he's got another one um he's got quite a few properties out right now but again www.makecomicscool.com you can see all the great work so dylan was a no-brainer on somebody that we wanted to seek out to see if he would help us with the look of our characters in our in our first comic book that were coming out that we wanted to release on halloween of course in the year 2000 and um throughout the whole pandemic um i got this um this mask from dylan of um, his warwood character i just really thought it was a cool design so that was my mask of choice during the whole you got a mask up phase of 2020 so um, we got to thank Dylan for that too. So one of the first things that Dylan made for us is this little zombie hand right here. So the zombie hand, he made it look really cool. And, you know, I thought of, you know, that's the, another, another motto is dreams never die. So this dream has been in my head of having good and evil for so long. And I just wanted to carry this on and go, you know what? Dreams never die. We can start this. I don't care how old you are, how young you are or whatnot is you can start working on your dreams, you know, whenever you get, you let you stop letting doubt haunt you and you just move forward with what you want to do. So came up with this first idea of dreams never die with uh, an image that Dylan created for us. And we started selling these t-shirts to get people excited about, um, you know, the comic and things like that. So we created uh, a special limited edition, a limited edition run of t-shirts that we we called the Dream Team shirts, and these Dream Team shirts were um, were purchased by some amazing people in the world. Um, you know, of course, mostly our friends and family, because um, you know we're really trying to get the Good and Evil brand out to the rest of the world. And we've got some great, great, great support from friends and family to help us start the brand recognition. So these were very popular. They they sold out really quick. And again, we're super grateful for the people who. Who believed in our dream at the beginning and continue to believe in us so so the first image comic book cover that we have for our issue zero we were starting with issue zero because typically in the comic book world um we issue zeros represented the origin stories of the main character so we wanted to start off with good and evil issue zero and this is what it looked like through dylan's artwork right here so this is the first cover for good and evil issue zero and it's just a stunning stunning image of our character the elder um here's what it looks like without the trade dress on it and the other amazing part of this is not only is this dylan's artwork but the coloring was done by a professional professional colorist who's worked in marvel image comics um valiant all a bunch of independent comics and his name is thomas mason so right now I'm going to take off this banner really quick of Dylan's. And then I want to show you an example of the amazing work of Thomas Mason. Now, Thomas Mason is another guy that I stumbled upon. This, he happened to be on Instagram. And not only is he a professional colorist, but he is a phenomenal artist, inker, and penciler. So here's an example of how I was introduced to Thomas is Thomas, again, he worked for Marvel um, on various projects, and he was in charge of doing an anniversary issue of the, the most, the most, the best-selling comic of all time, which was X-Men number one, and that came out in the early 90s. So Marvel um, commissioned Thomas to do the recoloring of the iconic X-Men number one issue, and this is what it looks like. So on the top row is what the, his coloring looks like of the iconic covers of X-Men number one. And then Thomas being just a, a brilliant creative artist of in his own right, he went ahead and did a continuation of this, of this iconic picture. So he added the X-Force team that if you connect the X-Force bottom picture with the top picture, it just, it just extends to this beautiful image, a continuous image of, some more iconic mutant characters in the Marvel universe. So um, super, super, was super excited to see this. And um, so it was a no brainer to see if Thomas would help out with our dream project. And he was very gracious enough to do the coloring of our first, it, our first cover right there of what Dylan provided. So I'm going to go back and show you that cover again. So this is Thomas Mason's coloring 
and Dylan Andrews penciling and inking of it. So gorgeous, gorgeous image. And again, it just blew us away that we were going to have professional artists take our characters and bring it to life in a comic book form. So, um, so yes, very, very, very grateful for their contributions on that first issue. So I'm going to show you some more examples of Dylan's work that he's provided for us on our comic books. So again, this was issue zero right here. So this is an image of our current book, which is issue half. So we're building to one issue zero, then issue half, and then early mid 2022, we're going to be doing issue number one. That's going to conclude our, our story arc of these characters and what we're really striving to do with these characters in our um, in our destination phase. So this is what Dylan has provided for us on the issue, our next, our current issue, which is available on goodandevil.com. And so we, what we did with this issue is we did it a flip book on this. So if you, you're going to read the story of, of G's origin first, and then you're going to flip the book over, and then you're going to see the cover for E on the other side which is going to continue the story and bring it all together in the middle of the book. So again, this is Dylan Andrews contribution to our current book. And Dylan did the, in, um, the interior artwork for the story of the elder in issue zero. And he's done these special covers for us for issue half. So when you combine all those um, images together from issue zero and issue half, you get this beautiful continuation picture of all three of our main characters and look how stunning that looks so in this particular issue we do have a variant cover that has this this image on here that features dylan's work and colorist brian magne um, another another accomplished amazing colorist just like thomas um, again what we want to do is we wanted to highlight some amazing talent out there um, as we go along and to get our brand out there. We want to take a lot of great talent along with us to showcase their beautiful work. So this is that beautiful image. If you combine all three of those, those separate covers together, this is what you're going to get. So again, blown away with the contributions from these professionals. So moving on to another artist that helped us out with our first book on issue zero is an artist by the name of Adelso Corona. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out this over here. I'm going to put Delso's name on there, and I'm going to show you examples of Adelso's artwork. So the first images I saw of Adelso Corona, again, he was a, another independent um, artist. He is a professional inker by trade in the comic book industry. He is currently working on huge books, um, working on the X-Men characters for Marvel. He's working on the Spawn universe for Image Comics and Todd McFarlane. He's in, uh, he's an inker for amazing penciler Brett Booth. But now again, just like Thomas, who can color, he can ink, he can pencil. Um, Adelso, even though he's a professional inker for by trade, he is a, an amazing artist. So here are some examples of commission that commissions that Adelso has done for me over the years. Again, somebody that I that I had stumbled upon a couple of years ago. And of course, throughout the years, he's grown his talent and his, um, and his, um, you know, again, his notoriety through working with, you know, every year becoming bigger and bigger in the industry. So here's some beautiful examples of characters that I love. And you got Moon Knight in the top left corner. You got Darth Nelius from the Star Wars universe. And then the bottom left is a character named Rage Talty of another amazing friend and artist that we'll be talking about in a, in a little while here. But um, this is a, an example of what brought me to, um, noticed, got me to notice Adelso's work. And here's some other examples of some cool things that he's done. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. You know, Adelso's worked on the character Bloodshot, who's had a movie out with Vin Diesel. He's This is a Valiant Comics um, title, and that's his... That's his um, that's his artwork on there. He's done other iconic characters, you know, on doing commissions for people, of, you know, people like Spawn. You got Snake Eyes on the bottom left corner. You got Skeletor on the bottom, but just a stunning, de um, super detailed artist, and uh, so very, very grateful for this contribution that he did for us on our first issue of Good and Evil. 
Um, he was very gracious to provide this image for us. And again, Thomas Mason did the coloring of this image. So very, very, very grateful to have professionals help us little itty bitty comic book creators um, help get our, our work out to the world. So Adelso, Thomas, Dylan, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's just beautiful artwork that we'll have that's going to represent us for the rest of our, you know, our careers with these people and, um, and these, in this brand. So, um, so I want to talk about another amazing artist who helped us with our first, our first comic book and our current book. Um, and his name is Mr. Shelby Robertson. So let me show you some examples of Shelby's work that I was introduced with long time ago. So way back in 1993, 94, 95, around that era, um, I was introduced to a book called Black Flag that was created by Dan Frega. And Shelby Robertson was a, was a teenager at the time um, working in the studios of Extreme Studios for Image Comics. And Extreme Studios was an image run by by artist and creator Rob Liefeld, who was the co-creator of Deadpool. And Shelby was um, one of the artists that was recruited to be a part of Extreme Studios as a teenager, along with Dan Frega and a other, um, uh, just a plethora of other amazing artists at the time. So this was the first published work that Shelby did. And this sh showed up in an issue of Black Flag. Um, and I just thought that the art was just, it just blew me away looking at it. And then I wouldn't see Shelby's work for decades later when I went to a comic book convention in, um, in Metro D, I'm sorry, it was in Chicago. And um, he had a bunch of horror movie icon artwork that I purchased from him and not knowing that this was the same Shelby Robertson who provided the amazing artwork, artwork back in the nineties. So once I realized, you know, Sutton saw, you know, even Shelby's current talent, I just wanted to follow him. And I saw some amazing independent books that he created um, outside of the, all the, again, the major industry comic book um, companies like DC and Marvel. So on the tag right there, it shows you how you can find some of Shelby's work. He has an amazing character named Rage Tality that, um, that I just fell in love with from the first time I saw that character. And so yeah, his art is stunning. So I'm going to show you some more examples of what drew me to Shelby as an artist. So this image right here on the on the left is a iconic cover from Civil War number one, which again, if you guys recognize Civil War, that was the movie that Marvel made a few years back. But this Civil War image right here was done in the early 2000s, um, which was written by Mark Millar. And this artwork on the left was done, this cover was done by um, another amazing artist by the name of Michael Turner, who has since passed and has left a huge legacy of other, inspired other artists, um, you know, to be comic book um, artists and, and they're, you know, and they're for their profession. So just uh, inspiration to a lot of people. So I just really loved that cover when I first saw it. And the story is amazing too. So then I asked Shelby if he would do a commission for me of taking some other characters that I absolutely love and if he can recreate an homage to that cover and, and um, add some characters that I really love. So on the right is Shelby's homage recreation of the Civil War cover that shows people like Spawn on there in the top right, Wolverine, another version of Wolverine, um, Moon Knight's in there, his character on the bottom left that if you're facing it, um, you're looking at it is this rage tality character and a bunch of other image characters from the nineties that show up in the, his piece. So very, very grateful for um, Shelby's doing that commission for me. So, um, so again, Shelby is the main, is the person who suggested that we do the comic book for our characters. And, um, and he was very gracious to provide artwork for that first comic book. And here's his, iconic cover of of our issue zero right there and it just absolutely was stunning right there i'm going to take this tag off here really quick so i want you to see the bottom of this so on the bottom of this picture these are some of the um iconic characters that i love growing up and i asked shelby if he can add those character hands on the bottom and uh, he absolutely did and it looks amazing so this is another variant cover of our issue zero that was done by Shelby Robertson. 
And a beautiful thing about um, Shelby is that he continued to work with us on issue half that just came out. And he provided these images. Not only did he provide, he provides the interior art of this one. Dylan did the interior art for our first book. And Shelby's doing the interior art or has done the interior art for issue half. Here's an example of some of the covers he did for us on that. So this is this is G right there. And I'm going to take the banners off here for a second here. So I want you to see the as much of the image as possible. So this is our cover of e, G. So again, you're going to flip the cover over for our current issue. And then you're going to see the story of E. So this is um, his beautiful, beautiful images he's, did, he's done for us on our characters G and E. And then if you flip the book open and look at the covers, this is what it's going to look like. This beautiful, beautiful cover that he did for us. And again, he does the interior art of our, our issue half book. And it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Uh, and again, you can get that on goodandevil.com. So this is an example of what Shelby's done for us in our brand. And I want to show this right here too, even though I put it on the banner is this is um, Rage Tality right there. That's this, this current um, character that he's working on right now. And there's, there's his Instagram tag up there if you want to look up his work. But yes, 94 is the name of the comic. And Rage Tality is, um, Rage Tality's war number one is the, um, is his extension of the 94 universe. And it, you can find that right here at Indiegogo.com and just type in 94 Rage Tality's War and you'll be able to help support his work and to see more of his outstanding work. So those are the three main artists. So um, like I was alluding to, and like we showed you at the beginning of this whole video was that um, if we have a platform to, to help bring other people out there and to come along on the, on the ride, the good and evil, and to help showcase some great talent out there. We also enlisted some talent of some college students in the, who live near us or going to college to be graphic designers, art majors, and whatnot. So we wanted to, we were very gracious to have some highly talented people help us with our first book who um, did provided some fan art for us. So the first book doesn't have a lot of story to it. Um, and again, Dylan did the artwork on that, but we had um, some amazing, talented college students and current high school students who helped make our, um, our comic book dream come true by adding some beautiful art pieces in there. So I'm gonna show you some of those pieces right now. So the first image I'm gonna show you is from artist, Christian Armando Perez, who just happens to be my son, you know, I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, very talented. And here's a, here's an example of the, one of the fan art pieces he did of our elder right there. So absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous work that he did for, for, um, for us and very proud of his work and very proud that he, that he contributed to our, our first book right there. Uh, another college student, um, her name is Grace Moringo. And I'm going to go ahead and put her image on here. So, again, these are different representations of the art style of all these amazing artists right here. So it was so cool to see their interpretations of our characters. And, um, again, they really brought our characters to life in their own way. So, Grace, thank you so much for your contribution. It looks, it looks amazing. Um, next image is going to be by uh, student Miles Honus. And let me go ahead and put his name up there, too. So Miles provided this cool image. Again, just I love the different art styles that they did for us. And um, I really, really, really dug their interpretations right there. So that's Mr. Miles Honus right there. Next image I'm going to show you is from Jackie Gemby, another college student who's going to school for 3D art, or, you know, 3D modeling, and also graphic design. So here is an example of Jackie's. Now, Jackie took the image of, Jackie took this image that I had in my mind at the beginning of the conception of, inception, I should say, of the, um, of good and evil was I had that, this iconic thing in my head of, okay, again, the undead and the living going to good and evil, our destination. And Jackie came up with this beautiful, beautiful image for us. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie. You really captured um the essence of what we're that we were really wanting to go for as far as representing our brand right there so that was a gorgeous piece that jackie did for us um and then the next image i'm going to show you 
is from a current high school student. Um, her name is Veronica Moore, and this is a cousin of mine that um, since in, since grade school, I've been in awe of her artwork. So here's another interpretation of our characters, G and E, and I'm go ahead and put Veronica's name up here. But this is more of like a chibi anime style of our characters, and I'm just, again, blown away from the talent that Veronica has. And again, she, can, um, she contributed this piece to our first comic book, and thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Veronica. It looks absolutely amazing. So... So yeah, I really wanted to show you the progression of our comic book. And then in future videos, I'm going to talk to you guys about the music that was that was inspired and um, another surprise, um, another cool surprise project that um, that we're going to be a part of that um, I can't wait to, to let you guys know about it. And again, it's working with more and more industry leaders in the comic book world that I am so excited to talk to you about. But uh, I'm going to wait a little while before I, uh, I bring that out <laughs> to the open there. So let me go ahead and take this away here real quick. Get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of this over here. And then you can see my mug for a little bit longer here. So, um, yeah, so it's very important for me to, um, you know, for people who haven't really, who are just now getting on board with, um, finding out about good and evil. Um, I've done videos in the past that talk about this, the things that I just talked about, but um, I'm really grateful for this, um, this um, stream, stream yard for having this great, great um, software for me to be able to even more clearly show you what we were, what we're trying to do with our brand. So um, again, we want a destination phase and we know that it's going to take a while to get there and we're building our, our good and evil universe from the ground up. So, Again, we've got the logo, we have the website, we have domain name, we have merchandise that you can get on goodandevil.com. And you can see the banner on the bottom that's been going through the whole video here. And um, again, I'm going to talk about the, the, the music in a later video, but you can, you can get a preview of it by checking it out at goodandevil.bandcamp.com to see the five-track the five track EP that we have that that's inspired by the first comic book that we came out. So we have some amazing, talented uh, musical artists that um, are bringing our comic book to life through their interpretation of the story. So that can be found on the bottom there. And also on Spot, you can you can stream the album on Spotify and Apple Music. So in just a year and a half, um, we've, built, we've built everything from the ground up as far as the comic book um, universe and the music. And, you know, our next steps are we want to get some professional cosplay going with our characters. Um, we want to do some, you know, volunteer work in the community for with, you know, having our characters out there. We're just trying to get the, the brand name out there and, and really model and represent what we're trying to do with this, with our whole brand. Um, also, we have a short film that we want to get to because the whole thing about going through all these multimedia aspects of um, what we're doing, comic books, movies, um, music is we're trying to get the word out to as many people as possible. So, um, so we really appreciate, you know, if you share this, these emphasis information with other people, um, we're on TikTok, YouTube, um, Instagram, Facebook. And again, we've only been around for a year and a half, but, um, we have bigger, 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 bigger dreams. And it's really been just a blast. And, um, we're very grateful to be able to have something to focus on, a positive thing to focus on, um, along with our day jobs. We still have day jobs, Matt and I, but um, this is not a job for us. This is a passion. And to be able to work with friends, family, industry leaders to help our getting our brand out, it's these are dreams come true, being comic book fans, movie fans, horror fans our whole life. Um it's, I can't tell you how gratifying this whole thing is. And then the support we've gotten through um, our current comic book, we went on Kickstarter and, and it was backed by just um, over 50 amazing people who got us funded within two weeks of the beginning of the campaign. So, you know, we have some really, really great supporters out there and you know what, we're looking for more people to, to hear about us and to see the other talented people that are, that we're bringing on board on our brand and the college students, the other professional artists, the musicians. Um, there's so many people that have brought this, 
this comic book in our brain to life in a short amount of time. Um, I do also want to mention Comics Well Spring. It's a printing company that specializes in making comic books, and they're based out of Plymouth, Michigan. So Comics Well Spring, um, I'm going to put their name up here really quick. Um, they're just phenomenal, phenomenal. They brought our comic books to life. They just have such quality products out there um, that help bring our comic books to life. And let me show you a little banner for them, too. So, yeah, they do comics, posters, paperbacks, business cards, flyers. They do um, tablecloths. They do professional presentations for people who want to, you know, do presentations at conventions and things like that. But they make such a, a solid product. They made such they made our comic books look so good. The quality of the paper they use, the. Um, they do foil covers for their comic books. Um, they just do a, a heck of a job. And again, they're another vital part to making us making us look good right now. So Comics Well Spring, um, which is an extension of Greco Printing in Plymouth, Michigan, um, has been such a great supporter of ours, and we can't thank them enough for their for their contribution to our to our brand. So um, that's what I'm, gonna, I'm just going to conclude with that right now. So. Um, again, I really want to get the the story of what started Good and Evil, what we're trying to do with Good and Evil, what some of the things we have out there currently with Good and Evil. And um, this is just the beginning, folks. And I'm excited to do other videos in the future to show you, to talk about the music, the great people who helped us with that. And then um, to talk about the, the other secret comic book um, project that we're working on. And then, again, look out for issue number one. That's going to come out in uh, early to mid 2022. And um, when, then at the time when I can talk about the film and the people who inspired that, um, we'll keep you a go. We'll keep you um, informed. Yeah, again, follow us on all the social medias, follow us on our website and um, to see all the exciting things that we got going on. So again, we're looking for people to spread the word. Um, the more people will know about us, the more, more people will, will help us make this dream a reality. So I hope everybody digs the idea of having a, a Halloween 365 destination that has all those amazing things that we're talking about. But bottom line is we want to have a destination for people to be the best, the best version of themselves and to not, you know, to get rid of all the negativity in the world. And we want to play our part as best as we can to bring harmony to the universe. So um, that is that. Again, my name is Mike Perez. I thank you. Thank you so much um, for watching this video. And um Again, I'm looking forward to greeting you guys personally at the, the entrance of Good and Evil. So, again, thank you. Be safe. And um, it's it's Thanksgiving week. I have so much to be thankful for, and I'm thankful for you guys for even watching this. So um, take care and uh, be safe.